Thank you. Did you ever have one of those moments in your life when suddenly all your questions are answered? The sky opens, the sun shines, the clouds part. For the first time, you can see what's important and what choices you need to make. Did you ever have a moment like that? Eh, neither have I. And that's why I've always felt close to the platypus. A living symbol of total confusion. He's part duck, part beaver, part fish. He's the only mammal in the world that lays eggs. He's got one foot in the present, one flipper in the past. He just can't make a commitment. In other words, he's just like most people living in the 90s. So if you're confused by nature and you can't make up your mind, it's nice to know that somebody swimming in a river is even more screwed up than you are. Woke up this morning and I rolled out of bed Ran my shower, took a bath instead Pulled out the drive at a quarter to ten Thought it all over and pulled back in Looked at the bedroom, made my way Went back to sleep, it was a typical day I'm the platypus man Platypus man You don't, damn if you will, damn if you won't, embarrassed to win, ashamed to lose, I'm just like a hooker in sensible shoes. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome Mr. Richard Jenny! Quit it. All right. Hey, hey, stop. What if I suck? Wouldn't that be embarrassing? All right, listen, before I say anything and get into the show, I just want to point out that if you're out in the audience and you're thinking about getting into comedy, you have just seen the best reason to do it. A whole band playing for no reason, except you happen to be walking in. Isn't that a great feature of a job? I mean, wouldn't that cheer up your job? Every time you do some little bullshit thing in the office, boom, the whole band kicks in. <laughs> You're hanging in the office, hey, I think I'll take these papers over to the Xerox machine, get them copied, you know. <laughs> ha! Looks like it's broken, better head back. receptionist you've been a great office I'll be here all week <laughs> so anyway my name is Richard Jenny I'm from New York where our slogan is show me a guy with one foot and I'll show you a guy who tried to hide his money in his shoe <laughs> all right I uh <laughs> last time I was in New York was for the Democratic Convention yes people Bunch of people from all the different states bragging about Paul. Mr. Chairman, the great and wonderful state of Tennessee. And I was home in front of the TV going, shut up. I've been there, come on. <laughs> That's the trouble with the convention is they, they, they brag so much that it gets really boring. I think the political conventions would be a lot more fun if they would just, you know, send up like the worst guy from the state, you know, and be funny. You know, you go, the chair recognizes the state of Mississippi. And they just sent out the fattest redneck and suspenders. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Chairman? Mississippi, state slogan, the you'll never be lonely as long as your sister is home state, is proud to cast all of its southern votes, do da. You know, just be funny about it. Uh, chair recognizes the state of Florida. Florida? Hola, senor chairman. <laughs> Fellow delegates. Florida, the cocaine, alligator, and mosquitoes as big as your fucking sister state. Just to show you I'm not being cheesy, my own hometown, we just... Uh, chair recognizes New York. State of New York. Hey, Mr. Chairman! 
Contractors had the key. Let God be the judge. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. I don't, uh... <laughs> I don't do a lot of political uh, jokes, you know, because I don't really watch the news, to be honest with you. Because I live alone in a big house, and the 11 o'clock news is way too scary. The 11 o'clock news makes The Exorcist look like a Disney short. You know, I'm all alone in that house at night, man. You know, and I got one of these houses. Anybody's house make these weird Stephen King noises at about me? I was being laying in bed all alone, and the roof suddenly goes, <laughs> What the hell was that? Gonna check it out? Definitely not. Why not? Because I got pajamas on, that's why. What if there is a guy on the roof with a hockey mask and a chainsaw? You can only be so tough in pajamas. What are you gonna do, jump out on that roof, kick off the slippers? All right, asshole. <laughs> Looks like you got the wrong roof. Yeah, it's a hair neck, what about it? I don't wanna watch the news alone in a house, I wanna watch happy stuff such as the National Geographic Show. A great show with a great theme song. Dun, 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 if you hear that, you'll know it the rest of your goddamn life. Don't laugh, you're screwed. You all know it right now. Check it out. One, two, three. And now on National Geographic, let us join Jacques Cousteau for a typical episode where he remains safely on deck and no one seems to notice that they're the ones getting their ass bit off by this week's giant ocean beast. He's so cool, Jacques. He's like getting a tan, you know, he's driving. The Calypso pulled up into an unbelievably dangerous area. I looked through the binoculars and knew we were in the area of a dangerous animal. The giant, electrified, horny toad exploding. Bad smelling, saber toothed poisonous, lesbian, bulimic squid. <laughs> Needless to say, I was shitting a brick. Someone had to dive down and poke him in the ass with a turkey baster for scientific purposes. Well, I'll be goddamned if I was going down in that water at my age. I didn't get to be 175 fucking with a giant squid. And so when my son wasn't looking, I snuck up, kicked him in the water, gunned the engine, and took off like a bat out of hell. Be with us next week when he will give an enema to a giant sperm whale. I will remain on deck, seeing that the croissants do not get too well done. Then they crank up the theme music, which is... So join us, won't you? As we follow, thanks. As we follow, <laughs> as we follow the platypus. <laughs> That's a real animal I saw one night. They had the platypus on. I was laying in my bed, chomping popcorn. House. <laughs> Watching the Geographic show. On comes the platypus. The platypus is the only animal in the world that's a mammal but lays eggs. He has a tail like a beaver and a bill like a duck, but he's neither one. And I was going, wow. This animal is really messed up in the brain. <laughs> so I kept watching, turn up the volume. They said, the platypus lives alone. It has very short legs. It eats late at night and can't even see its food. And I went, wow, <laughs> this animal is me. <laughs> I'm platypus man. They should put me on the National Geographic show. The adventures of a totally confused, short-legged night feeder. And this would be adventure number one, just trying to fall asleep in that bed with the house. <laughs> and then I make the big mistake sometimes and put on the news. I told you, it's the worst. They should just call it the bad news. They should be honest, come on television and go, good evening, here's the bad news. Every bloody disgusting thing that happened today, press into a half an hour right before you go to bed. <laughs> if you thought you were scared before, You'll soil your pajamas when we bring out our anchor man, Grim Carnage. Grim, tell him the bad news. Well, the anchor guy should just have like a robe and a sickle. He just pop right out. Good evening, I'm the anchor guy. It's 11 o'clock. Here's who's dead. 
Thank God the meteorologist comes on. He'll put you to sleep. <laughs> He's sleep-inducing, isn't he? I'm Bob, the meteorologist. Let's go look at some weather that's not happening anywhere near where we live. <laughs> what for, Bob? Let's go to the map. Let's go to the map! And I'm laying in bed going, let's not. Want to know the weather? Here, let's go to the map. Come on. Let's go to the window. Why we go to the map? I don't understand the map. Why are we at the map? You know, I always feel like an idiot when he goes to the map. I don't know what's going on. He might as well have a rat colon on the map. I have no idea what's on the map. Come on, we're at the map. Pay attention, this is really important. Okay, you see this massive glob of white shit that you don't even understand? <laughs> hanging out in the middle of the ocean where nobody even lives? Well, <laughs> if this thing goes this way to a place you're not going, <laughs> heads this way over a lot of people that you could give two shits about. <laughs> and then settles in this section that you haven't even heard of. Well, a bunch of dairy animals could experience do. <laughs> I'm Bob. The meteorologist. Yeah, you know, so I'm laying there. <laughs> so I'm laying there, you know. Shut up, Bob. You're the weatherman. If he was a meteorologist, what would he talk about? Meteor. That's what I've always said. And it would be a short report, how much could the guy say? Here's Bob, the meteorologist. He'd go, haven't seen any, back to you. <laughs> Totally clear out there. No meteors, no asteroids, no Klingons. Fabulous night for space travel if ever I've seen one. Just get in that rocket and party down. Back to you, Grimster. Take it away, Grim. Well, thank you for that meteor update, Bob. While you were on, other people died. Here's, here's a bulletin from New York. A gang has dug up a murdered nun and killed her again. <laughs> and now let's go down to Texas where our reporters are attempting to make a tragedy victim cry on the air. <laughs> Always, right? Bad enough, the guy is 80 years old and he's in the middle of the highway and his boxer shorts all confused. <laughs> Got wiped out in the flood, you know. His house is floating away. Do they feel sorry for the guy? Do they help him? No. They're running after him like mice. Sir, sir! You're completely fucked. Any comment? <laughs> you don't have shit, sir. Any comment? Poor guy's crying. <laughs> Just once, I wish the guy was drunk when I interviewed him, you know? And he didn't care. Totally confused the news guy. You know, he's been slamming wild turkey since his house blew away. He could give a shit, you know? <laughs> Any comment? Hey, fuck off, I feel great. <laughs> really? Man, a thing like this gets you out of the house. I think the couch looks much better in the gas station. How about yourself? You know, with the bunk beds on either side of the highway, the kids aren't fighting as much. So you don't care? Not in the least. What are your plans? I'm going to Disneyland. Well, thank you for that bad news update, Bob. <laughs> and now let's go to the sports. Football, baseball, basketball, and for some reason, golf. I don't know why, <laughs> I don't know why they call that a sport. Not a sport, sorry. I know I'm gonna piss off a certain amount of fat guys in yellow pants. <laughs> I know it takes a lot of focus and concentration to wear those clothes without laughing, but let's be honest. I don't know, I play golf, I like it, but let's not call it a sport. Tell me if this roughly sums up the white hot competitive dangerous action of a round of golf, right here. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Shit. Dickhead. Am I leaving anything out here? I don't know. 
I like golf, but there's not enough chance of major injury. That's why I like football. What a great game. Yeah, football. Great game. Not so much the players. The announcers are really cool. <laughs> big announcers up there in that booth with a big geeky headset on. Talking about nothing. Hey, look at that player, Bill. What I hit looks like his lungs squirted right out of his helmet. What's your analysis? Well, that's gotta hurt, Bob. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Hey, who would you say is buried in Grant's tomb? I'm gonna go with Grant, Bob. No wonder you're getting the big money. Shut up. Why is he talking at all? You know, you're watching, you're watching this stuff on TV anyway, you know? This is all the announcer has to say. See that? So did I. Back to you, Jim. All you gotta say. But they like to talk. Even the referee in football talks too much. Have you noticed this? He's got a little button right here on his belt. And every time a guy does a penalty, they stop the whole game so the ref can turn on the button, announce who did it, and basically humiliate the guy on national TV. <laughs> this is his whole job, just stop the whole game to embarrass this one. <laughs> the reason we stopped, the reason we're all hanging around here and not doing anything right now, is because some people out here don't seem to know the rules of the game. Do they? Number 71. 71, you fat, waddling hog. Don't try to deny it. We have it on tape. What a loser. Can't really blame the ref, though, can you? Wouldn't you do that if you were him? Think about this. You're a ref. An ordinary guy. You're not making the big money. But, got a little button right there in the belt. You know that every time you turn it on for the first time in your whole stupid life, the whole country has to listen to you. I don't know about you, I'd be stopping that game every 10 minutes just to get some shit off my chest. <laughs> the hell with the game, I'm talking about me. I'd be right out on that field going, uh, there was no penalty, this has nothing to do with the game or the players. I just need to talk. I'm sorry, this is gonna take a few minutes. Get up here, folks. I don't know how much longer I can keep this shit up. I feel like a fraud out here. I mean, sure, I'm the ref and everything, but who am I to judge these players? I mean, what if I'm wrong? Look at some of the decisions I've made in my own life, for Christ's sake. I'm 62 years old and I'm a fucking ref. Oh, I'll be honest with you, lots of times when I'm out here, I'm not even thinking about the game. My wife's turning into a cow. I love my kids, but if I had to do it again, no way, Jose. Plus, the other thing that's really bothering me, I, I don't know, I just kind of feel like I'm a woman trapped in a man's body. Did you ever dress up in your wife's underwear when she's not home? God damn it, I'm 63 years old, I don't care who knows it anymore. You give me a pair of thong panties and some perfume, I am in hog heaven, buster. Hog heaven. <sighs> there, I feel a lot better. Better get back to the game, sorry for interrupting. <laughs> First down. <laughs> Thanks. He is truly a platypus ref. Doesn't know what to do. A lot of times like that in life where you just don't know which way to go, to be a mammal or lay an egg. For example, the other night I'm at the Red Lobster or one of those lobster places, you know, and there's always one part of your brain going, God, a lobster would taste really good. And then you have this other part of your brain going, this is the sickest, cruelest thing I have ever seen in my life. Picking the lobster out to be killed. <laughs> I can't even do it. I can't, I just have to like, you know, I gotta get like six beers and then you don't care. You know, then you throw anybody in a pot, you don't care. <laughs> Drink enough, you look at the lobsters with that Emperor of Rome attitude of, Bring me the brown one. He amuses me. <laughs> the one there on the left sees him. <laughs> Have him boiled immediately. <laughs> he shall pay for his crime. <laughs> Table next to me is a bit obnoxious. Boil him as well! <laughs> it's so sick. The lobsters have that look of, any word from the governor? You gotta get me out of here. And the sign up over their tank, right? They had a sign up over the tank. It says the lobsters in here were flown in. Think how cruel that is. 
You're a lobster. You've never been on a plane before. You're happening, you're flying, you're eased back. You think you won the lobster sweepstakes. <laughs> you're in first class by the window. <laughs> Not bad. Not only am I getting a free trip, I'm earning valuable frequent lobster miles. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're locked in a tank. Both your hands are tied. Everybody in the place is wearing a bib with your picture on the front. <laughs> hey! What happened to the friendly skies? What are you doing with that pot? There must be some mistake. I'm a, a sweepstakes winner. <laughs> Why am I the only animal that has to put up with this shit? How come if you go to a steakhouse, they don't have a bunch of live cows around? Because <laughs> you wouldn't eat one then, would you? They actually showed up at your table with a live cow. What do you think of this one, buddy? With a baked potato, I don't think you can go wrong here. Say the word, I got a gun. I'll blast the shit out of him right here. He's a real fine heifer right there, boy, I'll tell you that. This is the best cook you'll ever have. I think he's your man, right? Hey! Put your head up, asshole. What the fuck's wrong with you? There's a customer here. You want this job or don't you? The cow's got that look up. <laughs> Why don't you have a lobster? <laughs> He's going, Why don't you mind your goddamn business? The man has made his dinner selection, fat boy. And if I may say so, sir, a fine choice. It was. Very much. <laughs> of course, the announcers are up there. Boy, look at that lobster boiling up on the shell there, Bill. What do you think about that? That's got to burn, Bob. That's got to burn. He'll be out at least for the second half, no question. A lot of platypus decisions in life. Marriage is one. Sometimes you think you want to get married, but then... Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> you just don't know. Sometimes you turn on the news and there's Willard Scott going, this couple has been married for 150 years. <laughs> and you turn on the bad news, a Milwaukee woman has crazy glued her husband's butt cheeks together. And you're going, hey, <laughs> which one of those is gonna happen to me? So that's a rough moment in a marriage when you wake up with your ass glued shut, you know. <laughs> you know guy heads to the bathroom in the morning, realizes something is wrong when a vein start busting in his forehead. You know? Heads down to the kitchen to confront the little lady. <laughs> Honey, I know you were upset last night when we went to bed, but uh, did you glue my ass shut while I was sleeping? <laughs> She's making breakfast. Since when do you notice anything I do around here? <laughs> All of a sudden, you're Mr. Observant. <laughs> I'm not married. I know that the food is better if you're married. I've never been married, I just know the food can't be any worse than the food-like substances that I'm eating in my house. I got bugs in my house going, uh, we're gonna order out, do you want anything? <laughs> <laughs> what about my food? If you're referring to that shit you bring home from the Arco station. Don't insult us. I don't know how to cook, and I'm never gonna know how to cook until they start putting some cooking shows on that television that are devoted to the single guy, late night, platypus lifestyle. <laughs> Most of the cooking shows they have on now, for people who already are pretty hip in the kitchen, if you know what I'm saying. It's always some guy 12 in the afternoon on TV in a suit going, hello, welcome to cooking from the planet Mars. Today we're going to make a massively complicated dish using ingredients you don't have, utensils you can't afford, in a kitchen bigger than your whole fucking apartment. good is that? I need a cooking show I can relate to. A cooking show with more of a regular slob. No English accent on this guy. He's an ordinary pig. Comes right out on television in his underwear. And not just any underwear. The repulsive ones that say, home of the Whopper, right on the front. Just a big, fat slob of a guy. Comes out there every week. Cooking with Bill the Belching Gourmet. Big, fat gun on the guy, you know. 
pizza boxes and porno books all over that studio. A cooking show for anybody who ever tried to make tuna fish on toast and wound up in the burn unit with mayonnaise in their hair. A cooking show for anybody who ever ran out of dishwashing powder, put in shampoo, and wound up in the Lawrence Welk sketch from hell. Big, fat slob of a guy comes right on in television every Friday night at 4 a.m. during feeding hours. <laughs> Cooking with Bill. <coughs> Good evening. Thanks for tuning in to Cooking with Bill, the Belching Gourmet. Tonight, I'd like to make a nice beef Wellington. And I'd like to be in a hot tub with Julia Roberts, but hey, let's be fucking realistic, am I right? <laughs> no siree, what I'm actually gonna make is this shit here, the old standby to poor man's pasta, Kraft macaroni and cheese. That's right. Still 38 cents a metric ton. Can't beat it with a stick as far as I'm concerned. Well, let's pop it there in the old microwave while we take a look at today's product in the spotlight. And here it is, clam tomato juice. Clam and tomato mixed together and you drink it. And notice that I say, you fucking drink it. Because I can't think of a more disgusting Adams Family combination of juice. Who the hell thought of that? When's the last time you had some tomato juice and went, boy, that needs fish. Put some fish in there. How can you bring it out plain? Swizzle a little mackerel around in there for Christ's sake. What kind of a host are you? Want some climate? Oh, no, thanks. I just had a big glass of flounder apple, you sick psychopath. I just had some herring prune, but thanks for the invite. Well, while we're waiting on the macaroni and cheese, let's take a look at some of the mail that's been pouring in. <laughs> for you guys out there, and we need culinary tips. Here's a guy who writes in and says to me, Dear Bill, the other day... My wife and I got into an argument over the salad forks. She says they go on the right, and I said they go on the left. So here's my question. Do you think the Rams have a shot at the Super Bowl? <laughs> and speaking of bowls, if a bowl of carrots is so good for your eyesight, how come I see so many dead rabbits on the highway? I mean, is that an old wives' tale? Like, why do they say you have to wait an hour after you eat to go swimming? The other day I fed my fish, and they went swimming right away. <laughs> Anyways, before I go off on a tangent, here's my question. I was wondering, why does Diet Coke only have one calorie? I mean, if they get all those other calories out, what's the problem with that last little bastard, am I right? I mean, how do they know it's even in there? Maybe in a six pack, one can got all the calories. Maybe there's millions of cans with no calories, but there's that one killer can bouncing around. Hey, speaking of killer cans bouncing around, I was watching the Oprah Winfrey show the other day, and it turns out, that the United States government allows a certain amount of rat droppings inside of a hot dog that they consider an acceptable amount. Boy, if I had to describe my reaction in one word, that word would be, I couldn't fucking believe it. And speaking of not being able to believe it, what is this shit called, I can't believe it's not butter, huh, Bill? Well, then exactly what the hell is it then? I mean, you can call anything in a supermarket, I can't believe it's not butter if you're stupid enough. You can look at a lawn chair and go, can't believe it's not butter. Why not? Because I'm stupid. You know, it sounds to me, Bill, like the company that makes it is trying to avoid some kind of a lawsuit. Like maybe there's foot ointment or something poisonous in there. You take them to court and you go, hey, this isn't butter. They go, hey, we never said it was. All we said was we couldn't believe it was. Now grease up your feet and take a walk, asshole. Hold on, Bill. Hold on, my pen ran out of ink. Okay, I'm back. Anyways, like I was saying, I've been eating healthy. And I've noticed that the more disgusting and horrible a food tastes when you eat it, the more likely it is to be really good for you. And then I noticed that my dog is always eating his own turds. So I'm wondering, does he know something that I don't know? Because he's got a real shiny coat and I'm losing all my hair, you know? I know it sounds disgusting, but he always has that look of, I can't believe it's not butter. Hold on, Bill, my wife is yelling about something in the other room. How do you like that? It's a boy. Anyways, like I was saying. Speaking of miracles around the house. The other day I put a box of baking soda in my refrigerator and I'll be damned if it didn't suck up all the bad odors. So I'm wondering, if you go to the baking soda factory and you fart, can anybody tell? Cause that'd be a good place to work if you're a real gassy person who ain't got a job. 
like my Uncle Bob, farts all day, plus he ain't working. I said, why don't you go down to the bag sort of factory? You, gotta, you know, leave work there and stop annoying us. Or if you have to live here, at least open a fridge and fart in there, you pig. <laughs> Signed confused. Well, thank you for that letter there. <laughs> Unfortunately, you ran out of time reading your psychotic wrangler. The good news is, the macaroni and cheese is just about done. Well, that's our show for tonight on Cooking with Bill. Thanks for tuning in. Until tomorrow, remember our motto, never fry bacon when you're naked. Thanks for tuning in to Cooking with Bill. The Belchie. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Disgraceful gourmet. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be a good show? Yeah. I already thought of a theme song for it. Guess what it is? <laughs> so join us, won't you? <laughs> Hello. Can I borrow your glasses? I'll give them right back, swear to God. How you doing? What's your name? Mary, nice to meet you. Troy, Troy Wedgie, underwear model. <laughs> I don't wear glasses, but I always thought they were the coolest thing in the history. I love glasses, you know? Because you wear glasses, you get to make really melodramatic moves like, what the fuck are you talking about, John? <laughs> I always wanted to be able to do that, you know? At the appropriate moment. For God's sake, she's 17, she can't have the baby. Because it doesn't work with contact lenses, right? You can't just lose your shit and go, how dare you bring a thing like that up? Why, I can't believe you'd walk in here with that kind of a statement, Bob. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Al, altimeter, test pilot. <laughs> what a cool crowd, all right. Let's move on, shall we? Oh, yes? He changed his mind. <laughs> that happens. Sometimes people get drunk enough to start heckling, but can't go all the way. <laughs> Just have a drink and go, hey, look, this isn't like me. <laughs> what, did you want something? <laughs> did you want something back there? <laughs> all right, let's move on. How many people in the audience are wearing a condom right now, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> Another platypus feature of modern life. You really love sex, nothing better than my, nothing more fun than sex, but then... Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> the condom. <laughs> A real, I don't know, you know. <laughs> Women actually buy condoms now, they do. I actually, I actually had a woman say this to me, she goes, do you mind wearing a condom? Tell the truth, Rich. We're friends, we're not dating, you can be totally honest. Do you mind wearing a condom? Does it bother a guy? So what am I gonna say? You know, I don't wanna be a whiny complainer. You wanna be a sophisticated man, a man who takes it on the chin. A man with a martini glass going, mind? <laughs> I prefer them, clink. Sometimes I wear six, seven condoms at a time. Mind, what the hell is there to mind? There's no difference in the sensation, unless you count the total lack of any. So, why the hell would I mind? I was just thinking I wish I had one on at this moment. If only I had a piece of really disgusting greasy rubber just strangling the base of my dick with enough force to cause my eyes to pop out on springs like somebody in a fucking Roadrunner cartoon and ripping out pubic hair in eight different locales. Whoa! Whoa! Could I have an evening there? I what the hell is there to mind? There's no better feeling. I love it. Love that tight, rippy feeling in the groin. In fact, after a hard day, what I like to do to relax is get naked, get into my favorite chair, and put on a fez. Get out a monkey wrench and start tightening that bastard right around the base of my tallywacker till I get a good blue thing that looks like a thermometer going. Then I like to get out some needle nose pliers and start yanking out pubic hair in clunks. And I'll be damned if I'm not sleeping like a baby in five minutes flat.
so why would I mind? What the hell is there to mind? There's nothing to mind. Don't you see? It's not myself I care about. It's those poor little spermy men. Poor sperm. They're one chance to do something important in their stupid little spermish lives. This is their big shot. Come on, men. This is it. We're going to make a baby. Let's run. Yay. Come on. We're almost there. Yay. Whoa. Go back, boys. It's a trap. The whole area. See... Will you stop pushing, asshole? You always were an idiot. We're not getting out of here. This sucks. Everything happens to me. I could have been somebody. Instead of a bum. <laughs> but, you know, a condom, small price to pay. We'll do anything. Women are always worth any amount of effort. I actually, check this out, I actually got a job when I was like 16 for, the, for that reason. Got a job in a lady's shoe store. That was my 16-year-old master plan. <laughs> Women will be there, high heels, short skirts. They've got to talk to me. I'm a genius. <laughs> yep, give you a little advice. If you have a choice between selling shoes to young ladies or giving birth to a flaming porcupine, <laughs> look into that second career. I was like a beaten hunchback when I left that job, man. Women just whipping me all day. I'm sorry, madam, I said nothing. <laughs> Mad at me because their feet are too big. Walking in going, I guess I'm Cinderella. And I'd be going, my God, Sasquatch has arrived. <laughs> I'm sorry, madam. And I learned the lesson. I found out that women use different mirrors than men do. <clears throat> they do. Women look in the mirror and always think that they look worse than they really do. With men, the opposite. No matter how much of a troglodyte that guy is, he looks in that mirror and says, I am a few sit-ups away from major studdom. <laughs> men don't know what they look like. I guarantee you that the elephant man couldn't understand why the chicks weren't going for him. He'd be in England at a singles bar with a trunk, walk up to a woman, excuse me. Can I buy you a cocktail? Get lost. Get lost, hey? Must be a lesbian. <laughs> Couldn't be my appearance. I've always felt the trunk makes the man. <laughs> Men don't know what they look like, and if you don't believe me, go to the beach. And you will see some of the largest, brightest land mammals on this continent. <clears throat> who have shrewdly chosen for their outfit the Speedo swimwear. <laughs> A man who should be wearing a poncho on the beach. A man with more genetic defects than a Hudson River trout has chosen this tiny, teeny bathing suit. What was he thinking? He had to try it on. He had to look in the mirror. And he had to approve of it and go, Oh, this is me. This really shows off my large, gelatinous, egg-shaped, harpoon-scarred gut in a way that is bound to drive the chicks wild with desire. They said, what do you think? How do I look? You look like you swallowed a small boy. Really? That's great. Ah, the chicks are going to be crazy. Salesman, do you have anything smaller than this? Because I don't think all my back hair is showing in this outfit. And I wouldn't want to deprive the women. What is that about? But I have seen good-looking women, really attractive women, I've seen them come into a shoe store and be highly depressed because their feet are too big to fit into the shoes that they want to buy. And they're mad at me. What do you mean I wear a size 10? It's the biggest size they make. Why do you think I need a size 10? Well, you put on a nine and it exploded. <laughs> I'm sorry, madam, I said nothing. Well, maybe your box had the wrong number on it. Yes, perhaps. Maybe your foot's a canoe. That's a possibility as well. I could... I'm sorry, madam. I said nothing. Said you're the best woman I ever knew. Well, I'm going to try another place. Excellent. Try a blacksmith while you're out there. Get about four shoes in that box and get out of my life. That's just one woman. Lots of times they shop in a pack. I have seen a hundred women show up with one woman who needs to buy shoes. Men, convinced they look good, go along. Never see a bunch of guys get together, grab a keg, put on some shorts, 
and head for Tom McCann. <laughs> what about the game? Screw it, we need shoes. Come on, boys. One man in and out. But I've seen women, they don't even shop. It's like a hunt sometimes. Whole primitive ritual. One of them needs shoes to get on the edge of a cliff. Call a hundred friends with a conch shell. <laughs> Signal back. Grab spears, get up on some elephants, head for that shopping center. Lock the doors, boys, they're on the way. Shut the lights, get in those holes, this is not a drill. One of them sees a sail. Clearance sail! Come in there and stab everybody in the head. Light the store on fire. Come back with the shoes on a bamboo pole. Yes, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Well, so anyway, that was a bad job, but not the worst job. The worst job in America today is working in McDonald's on the late, late shift. Because everybody that pulls up to your speaker has to harass you with a hamburger-related comment. And you can't even help it. I never want to bother the kid, really. It just sort of happens. Right? Nobody leaves their house going, let's go to McDonald's and fuck with the kid that works there. <laughs> it kind of happens, you know? I'm on my way there, you know, and I get there, I'm in the car, pull up to the speaker, and the kid, can I take your order? And I got to go, yeah, you don't have any uh, hamburgers, do you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Please, sir, just your order. Sorry, man. Hey, why can't you masturbate with these two fingers? Why not? They're mine. Waha! <laughs> got him again! Damn, I'm funny. Yeah, but the joke's on you because that kid's back there alone with your food now. You know he's back there taking off the top of your bun going, yeah, I got some hamburgers for you, Mr. Funny Man. Yeah, I think I'll get this order ready for you because that's the first time I heard those jokes in the last five minutes. Yeah, what are you drinking at? Diet Coke? Let me fix this here. Diet Coke up here for you, Mr. Joke Man. No calories in there, Mr. Funny Man. Have a Coke and a smile. That's my attitude, Mr. Joke Funny Man. Yeah, well, what are you looking at? Just shut up. Go out in front and work. Oh, tell the boss, look at my face. Do I look concerned right now? What's the boss been talking to me about? Advancement potential? What's that mean? I work two more years and get a better hat? Fuck him and him. Busting my ass in this bullshit where I got no money. Hell up and got going to drug it. Go tell the boss. Tell him. What's the boss gonna do with me? What can he do to me? I got no money, smell like a goddamn McNugget head to foot, and a big red hat ring around my head. How am I gonna get a woman? I ain't exactly James Bond walking in. How you doing, baby? I'm a no money, hat wearing, McNugget smelling man of your dream. Marry me. And I'll have you with this onion ring. I'll be with you. Well, anyway. <laughs> I think I speak for everyone when I say, it's time for another decision <laughs> of how to end the show. Now, how many people want the show to end with more political jokes? Okay. How many people want the cheap and disgusting sexual material? Thank God, because I don't have any more political jokes left. 12,000 crowds in a row. All right, true story, this really happened. I get a phone call and they go, would you like to perform your comedy act at the annual Pornographic Movie Awards in Las Vegas, Nevada? And I said, uh, free. Yeah. No charge. Funniest show, you, uh, you like comedy? Sneak into the Porno Awards. And you will be in a room with a bunch of people in tuxedos and gowns, like this is some major thing. And there's a guy up front giving away the awards, the porno toastmaster, giving away dirty movie awards like they're the Nobel Prize, saying, and I quote, the nominees for best anal themed feature of 91. <laughs> Splendor in the ass three, mind you, an American butt man in London. And everybody in the room was, oh yes, excellent films they were, Bob. I was the only guy there going, Pfft. come on. Why do you guys name X-rated movies, I told them. They're all the same, same plot. This should be the title of every X movie. Stuff that never happens to you. 
starring people having a lot more fun than you. Every guy I know that watches the dirty movies gets depressed halfway through. They do. They're sitting there with the remote going, this is great, this is perfect, this is, this is never going to happen to me, is it? <laughs> and then you look at the TV and you go, oh, no wonder I'm not in the porno movie. This man is built different. He has a penis bigger than some of the cars you've owned. Whereas you could fuck a Cheerio without breaking it, let's be honest. He's a big man. A man with a giant schlong whose job it is to have sex with a bunch of beautiful women and then get money. <laughs> well, let's go to the map. Find out where you fucked up in your career choice. <laughs> a man with a giant schlock. You have sex with a bunch of different women, then you get money. Today's study question, are you ever late for that job? <laughs> I don't think so. I think you're hopping to work. Hi-ho, hi-ho. It's off to work I go, my name is Rick, got a giant dick, hi-ho, hi-ho. Ah, there's the studio double doors. <laughs> Morning, everybody. How the hell are you? God, I love this job. Love it. What's that, Bill? Coffee? Fuck that, let's get right to it. I can't wait to start work on this job. Excuse me. <laughs> Seem to have bashed over some of the equipment with my rod of disaster. Of course, there's an announcer. Boy, that's gotta hurt, Bob. Look at that guy, smacked over all the dishware in his penis. He's... They're taping it up, but I think he's gone for the season. He's gone for the season, Bob. <laughs> but man, keep watching the dirty movies, no matter what! <laughs> they do. They keep watching, man, because men love oral sex, and they have more head than a beauty shop on Saturday in those movies. <laughs> Every two minutes, for no reason. Women just see a guy and go, what's your name, Jim? Well, I have no choice, do I? Drunk. <laughs> men can't believe it, too, because the men love oral sex. They will stop anything they're doing. If there's the slightest possibility, just go up to any guy, no matter what, and go, hey, uh, want some oral sex? And the guy, yes, let's go. <laughs> but you look busy. No, no, I was just doing some surgery. Fuck him, come on. No matter what, even Neil Armstrong, the first guy who walked on the moon's surface, right? Pretty exciting thing. Even Neil would be, you know. Neil was just used to go get the moon rocks. He's up there in a the spacesuit. <laughs> hey, Neil, what's moral sex? Why is that, ladies and gentlemen? Why? Why, why, why? I'll tell you why. Because oral sex combines the two activities that the average guy never gets tired of. One, sex. Two, not moving at all. The big two. They can't believe it. They cannot believe it. They're sitting there going, now this is the big two. This is perfect for me. I'm having sex, plus I don't have to move. God damn, if the Super Bowl was on, I could die right now. This is perfect for me. Perfecto. <laughs> but only in the dirty movies is the sex minute rice perfect all the time. In real life, there's a lot of little things that can go wrong, you know? <laughs> it's true. But in the dirty movies, nothing is a problem. They have anal sex in the X-rated movies. And you know this is a rough topic for Illinois, but I think it's important. They have anal sex in the X-rated movies like it's no big deal. Now, I don't know what goes on in your private lives. I always thought that this thing was a pretty complicated thing for the average woman to pull off. In the X-rated movies, it's no problem for the women. For them, it's sort of considered a polite form of greeting. You know, they just see a guy, hi, how are you? And I sure slam it up my ass, Jim. Come on in here, I was just making us some, some pie. What is that all about? What? Confession. I never even did anal sex with a woman, ever. Tried it two times and almost did it, but at the last second, the woman turned into Elvis. 
Yeah, she did. She turned to the Elvis. She went, okay, I really want to do it. So just do it on three. Go slow. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, thank you very much. That's not going to work out. Thank you. I appreciate you trying that, but that's, that's not going to happen for me. Uh, thank you very much. That's not going to work out for me. Uh, thank you. So now you're ready. Give me an ass to you and uh, something soft to sit on your page. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen for me tonight. I appreciate you trying that. Uh, let me tender. Let me crew. I have a little person to keep that up. And so what have we learned from this experience, ladies and gentlemen? Let's go to the map. <laughs> we learned about the platypus. We learned it's possible to get Elvis and anal sex right into the same joke. But more than anything else tonight, we learned the song that will be stuck in your brain the rest of your life. Think of me whenever you hear it. That song is One More Time. Thank you very much, Chicago. You've been a great crowd. I hope you enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, Richard Jenny. You've been really great. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is the popular will, but I'm politically correct. That has an oil spill. They know it's black, white, yellow, or blue. But sometimes the trouble is specifically you. If the Ripper was alive today, he'd go on Oprah and Phil, and he would have his say. The weight of his crime would be magically lifted. He'd be renamed as homocytically gifted. He'd be a platypus man. Platypus person, that is. When what they said in the past ain't what they say to you now. All you can do is throw your head back and howl. Damned if you do, damned if you don't, damned if you will, damned if you won't. Embarrassed to win, ashamed to lose. I'm just like a hooker in You gotta go to the source But mommy and dad They had a messy divorce They married till death Is the rule, my son They, they made that rule When people died real young You're old and it's dark And there's no one there Only stiff thing on you Is your oversprayed hair Caught between the altar And the Playboy mag I'm ten pounds of maybe In a five-pound bag I'm a platypus man Duck-billed, web-footed, river-dwelling White man Singing like this Hmm <laughs>